Hello everyone, so it's been about two weeks or so since I posted my video on wash trading and I think now is a good time to do a little Q&A that I mentioned earlier. You know, for updates and some cut content. But if you haven't seen my video already, then like, what are you doing? Go watch it. I'll leave a link somewhere down below. Though I don't really blame you if you missed it until now. It's on the KAG main YouTube channel. That's the team that I signed with a while back. But without further ado, let's begin. Let's first start with this one. And it's a question about fees. Is it possible to abuse the royalty fees? That's the fee that goes to the creator. And no, I don't think so. I can't find it at the moment, but I think IMEX has a minimum and max royalty fee you can set for your collection. However, what you can abuse is the marketplace fees. If you're an official marketplace like Token Trove, you normally have a fee of like 1 or 2%. However, well, I'm not sure who it is, but there is a marketplace out there that is charging like 4 to 6% for their ecosystem fee. And I find that pretty ridiculous because I mean, that's pretty high. But again, I'm not sure who it is. But if we're really talking about abusing the system, that's entirely possible. I've seen people put like a 100% marketplace fee just to show that they can do that. <laughs> and I mean, I find that pretty funny. Remember, always check the fees. Uh, that'll help you out. Next question. People have asked, what happened to Mutaswap? Like what happened to them really? In my video, I talk about Immutaswap going out of business due to not being included in the trading rewards program anymore. My thought process was that after being excluded from the trading rewards program, there was a significant decrease in their trading volume. So basically, I infer that there was a lot less royalty fees being collected because there wasn't as many or there wasn't any $10,000 trades happening anymore. So basically less royalty fees being collected equals less money coming in. Or at least that was my logic. Though I have heard other answers before. Someone brought up that too many people were exchanging gods and IMX to ETH, but not vice versa. According to Ironic Lemon, that's not exactly the case. It seems that they kind of had a plan for that scenario. Another reason I've heard for it shutting down was that it was unprofitable to operate. In the official post, Ironic Lemon says that the exchange is too expensive to operate. Does expensive mean unprofitable? Mm, probably. And it looks like they really needed the funding, but they didn't get it. But I did find this one message that made things a little more interesting. Apparently some stuff happened and they had to decide whether or not they wanted to continue. And it looks like they chose to shut everything down. Which is kind of sad. I mean, they really were the only exchange that did those kind of swaps. Well, until recently, of course. Gods.exchange is around now, and they do token swaps. It's run by Jesse. He makes a small appearance in my video, too. But he normally hangs around in the GU Discord, if you want to find him. Apparently, he's also a GU player that's been around forever. <laughs> And it looks like he's still waiting for the 2019 World Tournament as well. Alright, that's enough of that. Next question. Is wash trading encouraged by immutable? Or is it still allowed? I found a message recently that says no. Wash trading is not allowed or encouraged. So, there you go. But that begs the question. Earlier, Tea Time and Jazz's said that immutable employees told them that it was allowed or, or something like that. And I remember I found that interesting because I have screenshots of every mention of trading rewards or wash trading saved to a bunch of PowerPoint slides. And I don't remember reading those kind of messages. So I messaged both of them and, and they said that they couldn't find those messages either. So does this mean that they are lying? Well, not necessarily. So go ahead and put your pitchforks away. Let me explain. There used to be another channel where people talked about trading rewards. When I did my research on the 
HRO scenario, I never got a clear answer to the result because the discussion was moved to an unknown channel, a place where I don't have access to. I think it was called the Trading Rewards channel. So it's entirely possible that those messages are now locked behind a restricted channel that we just don't have access to. This isn't the first time I ran into this kind of scenario. Back when I made the Etherbots video, I ran into the same problem. The Ferguson brothers were basically double dipping by selling parts that they were supposed to be scrapping. They were, yeah, basically taking them and selling them on the open market. When people found out, they were pretty upset. But every time someone brought it up, they were directed to the scrap channel. And yes, the scrap channel has either been deleted or restricted because I don't have access to it. Apparently inside there is the Ferguson brothers justification for being greedy. But unfortunately, it looks like it'll never see the light of day. Oh yeah, so if anyone could get access to these channels, let me know. I really want to see what's uh, been hidden there. All right. Next question. Does Gods Unchained have the lowest royalty fee? In other words, is there another game or project that is close? Yes and no. Gods Unchained does have the lowest royalty fee. Well, it's tied. While I was making my video, I previously thought that Block Lords had a 1% royalty fee. And they do. But it seems that it varies from asset to asset. Sometimes it's 1%. Other times it's half a percent. And then there's also Undead Blocks. Last year they had a royalty fee of 1%, but it looks like it has been lowered since then. As far as I know, these three are the only collections that have that half percent royalty fee limit. And though I have checked a few other collections, there are just so many of these small collections that have almost no trading volume. So it's pretty much impossible to check the fees on every single one. It's rather interesting. But good catch by the person that pointed that out to me earlier. Okay, no more questions. I don't want to be here for an hour. I'm trying to keep this video less than 10 minutes. Okay, and let's talk about some cut content. In one part of the video, I showed this screenshot. And it shows a video talking about wash trading on IMX. So I was going to do a kind of response to it because it had over 2,000 views and a bunch of likes. But a couple of things prevented that. Like one, it was unlisted. So that means if you tried to find it, you couldn't. Of course, I did download it before that. And two, the video is like 15 minutes long. That plus my response will make the video well over 35 minutes easily. Even if I only responded to a few of the key points. And while their main conclusion in their video is correct, they had some strange ideas. Like, why does everyone use ETH instead of USDC? Because apparently they found that suspicious and they completely disregarded all the trades in ETH and only counted the trades in USDC. It's like, why? Who uses USDC? I mean, if you want to put any USDC from MetaMask to Immutable, you pay the fee in ETH. So why not just use ETH instead? I don't know. I don't understand their logic. Also, they have another weird moment. Like when they give evidence of wash trading. They briefly show this transaction and call it wash trading. I looked at this transaction and it looked to me like a guy was just buying a few uh, copies of uh, the same card and forging them later on. But they were like, aha, that's wash trading. Yeah, that's not wash trading. I mean, come on, watch trading is so easy to spot, but they completely miss it here in this example. But if people want to see the video, I think there is a French version of it out there. And I'm pretty sure it also has like thousands of views. I'll see if I can put it on the screen or find a link somewhere. All right, so that was cut out, uh, moving on. Oh, what happened to the projects I listed at the end? First one, land loot. Okay, I'll be honest, I don't know too much about land loot, even though I've looked at the Discord for a couple hours. But apparently they're one of the first projects on IMX, and they're supposed to be connected to a play to earn game that never came out. And they were connected to Filecoin, or you're supposed to earn some, but there isn't a way to actually withdraw it. I don't know, I'm, I'm not too sure. 
but I don't think it really matters. The team clearly abandoned the Discord a while ago. Here, look. In AMA in November of 2022, then four months of nothing, until February of this year, telling you that they partnered with some Board 8 Yacht Club's holder to sell a new NFT collection. <laughs> to sell a new NFT <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Hey, I got another scam to sell you. And... I don't know. And hey, they've been radio silent, and they've been radio silent since then. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like there's like a spider web of different things going on there, but I can only give you like this surface level of information right now. Maybe one day I'll come back to it and do a full in-depth video. But for right now, it seems, I don't know, it seems so complicated. All right, what are we at? We're at like 13 minutes, jeez, okay. Baby Ape Mining Club. So, some really high uh, transactions during the trading awards period. However, I couldn't find their Discord. They only ever tweeted about 17 times or so. And yeah, that uh, Twitter has been active since December 2021. Apparently, it's supposed to be connected to land loot some way. Again, I'm not too sure. Uh, probably just another scam. Alright, Planet Quest. Now, this is a weird one. Back in the summer of 2022, they had some high profile transactions. But after that, it really slowed down from there. I expected this Discord to be abandoned, but apparently it's still fairly active. I mean, it looks like they're doing like stories and lore and stuff like that to keep people interested. Plus, they have some like Discord events. I don't know. But then again, a lot of the activity seems to be done by the mods and the admins. I mean, they're just like talking between each other. I don't really see that many players or normal people around. As far as a playable game? <laughs> Quarter 1 of 2024. Jesus. But hey, it looks like they're going to have more uh, sales before that. Because, you know, money. Alright, uh, what else? Mutant Apes. Yeah, you can't actually find uh, mutant apes on IMX anymore, but it's heavily implied that they're also a scam. And in my personal opinion, I think they were probably banned because they're too similar to the Mutant Ape Yacht Club by uh, Yuga Labs on OpenSea. Basically, they're just a group of people trying to scam you. Again. Of course, there hasn't been an official response uh, by IMX. Well, except for this. And yes, it's hidden behind another no access channel. So it looks like we might never know. Last one, Ember Sword. Another game that isn't playable. Well, at least not to the public. And even then, it was a private alpha release. You know, invite only. But when is it supposed to be released? 2024. But hey, look, at least uh, that gives them room to get in their land sales and token release. All right, I think I've gone through everything. How are we doing on time? Is this less than 10 minutes? Close enough. Alright, uh, remember to go subscribe to my team's channel. More videos coming soon. Uh, I've been keeping an eye on a few games out there. A few Web3 games. And I think you'll find those videos interesting. But until next time, I'm the Outlaw. Later.